David, we see principles at work in each field of science, in physics, in biology, and even in the social sciences, different ways of organizing uh, observations. And some would say that some of these principles are very similar, so they try to build so-called general systems theory that take observations and laws from different parts of human knowledge and look for deep underlying principles that can be applied in each of these. Does, does that make sense? Yes. Uh, I'm not sure that the existing approaches to general systems theory is the actual way of integrating all sciences, but I think the idea that all sciences are integrated by their principles at the fundamental level is, is correct and has to be correct. An obvious uh, principle that, that unites all science is just the principle of testability, that the truth about nature takes the form of testable theories. I think that the principle of testability is a special case of a much more general principle, the principle of good explanation, a good explanation being one that is hard to vary while still accounting for what it purports to account for. Well, uh, there are things that perhaps are good explanations that cannot be testable. Uh, what I like in music, I may like uh, Mahler's Second Symphony and you may like uh, uh, Brahms' First Symphony as yes. your favorite. Now, those are real facts about the world, but they're certainly not testable in any way. But they in might have a good explanation. Exactly. So th this is the, what characterizes science within the realm of human knowledge, is that science has testable theories, and the truths about the physical world consist of testable theories. But this idea of a good explanation reaches beyond science into even, you mentioned aesthetics, even aesthetics. It, it's customary to say so-and-so is a matter of taste to mean there is no truth of the matter. Yes. But I think that cannot be so. I think there is a truth of the matter. It really is objectively true that, for example, Mozart is better, produces better sounds, more aesthetic sounds, than cavemen uh, uh, banging rocks together. And although we may not have a sophisticated enough knowledge of aesthetics, especially in explicit form, to know which is which, we know that it is there. The, the, the distinction between better or worse exists objectively in aesthetics as it does in morality and in every other area of philosophy. That's a, a, a fairly dramatic statement because to defend it by comparing Mozart to cavemen with their rocks sounds like it makes sense, but now if you compare Mozart to Beethoven or Mozart to Brahms, That's you, just, you uh, have a, you, I don't think you can have an objective it, analysis. Uh, it, what's happening there is that we do not know yet what the, the better way of analyzing these things is. But in that case, is that, is that uh, analyzable even in principle? I think it must be, and for the following reason. You cannot separate these fields, science and aesthetics and so on, totally from each other. As Jacob Bronowski said, for example, you can't do science, you can't make progress in science unless you also have certain moral values, such as tolerance, um, a respect for the truth, and so on. So these things are matters of moral philosophy, but they are essential to science as well. And therefore, they are essential to how the physical world is put together. So these different fields are only separated from each other by, for pragmatic reasons. Mm -hmm. If you look in sufficiently fine detail at the boundary between all these different fields of philosophy and between philosophy and science, you find they merge into each other and they can't be separated. So we have a number of ideas that we can classify as the principles that you feel really do work, testability yes. and good explanation. Yes. Are there any others that are fundamentally can be used to unify the sciences? Uh, I think that good explanation is the fundamental one as far as is known at present. I, mean, okay. there, uh, I, I don't believe that there's ever a absolute um, uh, foundation to be found to knowledge, but I think the deepest thing we know at the moment is the, the, the principle of good explanation, which implies all sorts of things about science. It implies, um, uh, it implies the principle of testability. In politics, it implies Popper's criterion that 
that uh, governments, that institutions should be constructed in such a way that governments and policies can be removed without violence, and so on. So basically, you are saying that general systems theory is correct, but it's only correct if we have one general uh, uh, systems theory principle, and that's good explanation, and within that broad category, there are various subsets, including uh, the testability Yes, science. as far as we know. Now, a, an explanation would not have to have a, a quantitative comparison uh, as, it's, as, as, a, as a requirement. That's right. As Galileo said that the, the, the laws of physics are written in the language of mathematics, but the laws of morality are not. And the laws of aesthetics are not. Uh, probably aren't. I mean, we don't, we don't know much about the laws of aesthetics. And about human society, whether it's politics or sociology, some of that may be uh, um, uh, absolute, but, and some of it m may not. But even that which is not subject to quantitative analysis is subject to rational analysis, which is part of a good explanation. Exactly. Rational analysis and objective truth, whether or not it's quantitative. The aspiration of general systems theory is definitely right. A and in all these fields, there is such a thing as objective truth to be found. And that is uh, part of what will link them. But wh I, whether the actual um, ideas in uh, general systems analysis is current, uh, are currently right, I doubt.